Lake Martin, the Pearl of Alabama, with 880 miles of shoreline, is one of the largest man-made lakes in the world. But if you ask anyone down south, it is also one of the most popular destinations in the Cotton State. So, whether you're into adventures and heart-pumping activities, or looking for hiking trails and stunning viewpoints, or trying to enjoy the slow tempo of the south, spiced with a bit of comfort food, Lake Martin is a place for everyone to enjoy. One of Lake Martin's landmarks is the famous Kalija Restaurant, sitting far out into the lake on a peninsula. One can recognize it by a tall wooden statue of an Indian standing in the front of the restaurant. It's the very same wooden Indian from Hank Williams' song, Kalija, the story of a wooden Indian who fell in love with an Indian maid. However, not many people know that some 80 feet beneath the waterline lies the town of Kalija. Even though one of the rare prosperous majority black communities in the South at the turn of the 20th century, Kalija is now nothing more than another chapter in the less known history of the United States. The history of Kalija is a short but fascinating story of a thriving black community. It's a tale of a group of men and their families determined to build lives out of the ashes of the Civil War in the racially segregated South. In just a half century, the hardworking black men and women turned a neglected land along Kalija Creek into a promising industrial and farming community. Its development, however, was interrupted by the same progress they strived for. Kalija and the entire area along the Tallapoosa River found themselves in the way of the Alabama Power Company, which in 1916 obtained the right to build a dam on the river. When the dam was finished in 1926, life for the Kalija community and other settlements along the river ended. Once the dam gates were closed, the river flooded the area and sent Kalija into the depths of the newly created Lake Martin. Back in the days after the Civil War, Alabama was still a dangerous place for black people. Even though President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, many black slaves were still held in bondage in Alabama and other states of the South. A slave named John, who worked on a plantation in Kalija Creek, had become a free man after the war ended. Free, but all alone, John decided to build his life from scratch. He took the surname of his master, James Benson, and went to look for his lost sister. During the age of slavery, it was a common thing to separate family members. John's sister was separated from him when they were still children and was sold to a landlord in Florida. John undertook a risky endeavor wandering the lands of Florida, but was finally rejoined with his sister. Together, the two of them returned to Alabama, where John found a job in Cahaba Field coal mines in Shelby County. Mining coal was a difficult job, even for the work-hardened man John was. He was paid only 60 cents per ton mined, but managed to save $100 by 1880. It was quite a large amount of money for anyone at the time, let alone a former slave. The money was the initial capital that John Benson used to buy land along Kalija Creek. Good crops and the favorable price of cotton allowed John to grow his wealth. Finally, after a decade of hard work, he had enough money to buy 160 acres of his former master James Benson's land, the land that was part of the very same plantation where he used to work as a slave. John was anything but an idle man. He worked day and night on his cotton farm. Unlike the old times when he worked for food and shelter, now his hard work paid off. By 1898, John Benson accumulated substantial wealth. He had over 3,000 acres of land, a brickyard, a sawmill, a grist mill, and a cotton gin with a compressing mill. Along with 40 other families, both black and white, he planted corn, cotton, and sugarcane. 1,000 acres of his land covered with pine, oak, and hickory provided abundant resources for the sawmill. Once an enslaved man, John Benson was now a wealthy landowner. His most significant wealth, however, was the community of farmers he created. Each of them had a job and a house of his own. There was even a tiny cabin schoolhouse where kids were provided basic education. It was something most black people in the South could only dream of. The community John Benson created was just an indication of what Kalija was about to become. John's son, William Benson, inherited his father's vision of creating a prosperous black community and took it to a higher level. William was one of three children John and his wife Julia had. John insisted all his children were provided a proper college education. William started his education at Fisk University and finished it in 1895 at Howard College in Washington with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Even though people expected the young man to stay up north and build his career in a more emancipated environment, William decided to return home. The desire to improve a community his father started to create was stronger than anything else. In 1895, when William returned home eager to build up his community, Alabama was still far from an emancipated society. However, the period between the Civil War and the turn of the 20th century was marked by some progress in relations between blacks and whites in the South. One could have even seen both sitting together in a restaurant or a theater. On the other side, 
In 1895, at least eight black men and women were lynched in Alabama. For this reason, Williams' ideas were even more important for improving the conditions of life for the black people in the South. Being a man of education himself, William knew that the only way to reach prosperity was through education and started collecting the funds to build a school. William's father, John, recognized his son's ideas and helped him by donating 10 acres of land for the school campus and lumber for the school building. Two years after the project started, the Kalaja Academic and Industrial Institute was finished. William managed to gather some prominent names in the school board, including Clinton Joseph Calloway, the school's first director, and Booker T. Washington, founder of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute for Negroes. The peculiarity of the school was that its goal was not to produce highly educated students. Instead, William intended to train the students for life and work in their home community and prepare those ambitious to gain additional education in more developed educational centers. He thought that skilled and educated workers were necessary to build up the economy, which would spur the community's overall progress. To achieve this goal, in 1900, William Benson organized the Dixie Industrial Company, an enterprise where students could put their training into practical use. Such a company was planned to take the Kalija farming community to a new, higher level, transforming the natural resources into finished goods for sale. In the same way, he established the Kalija Academic and Industrial Institute. William did a marvelous job setting up an industrial center for the village. Dixie Industrial Company comprised one of the most modern sawmills in the South, the largest turpentine distillery in the region, and a cotton ginnery. The company's farming business spread over 10,000 acres of land and employed 300 people, of which 30 were whites. Black and white families of the Kalaja community lived and worked in relative harmony. William's ideal was to secure a job for all of them, including children in the school. His plans went far beyond this as he wanted to attract black people from other villages to come to Kalaja. In 1898, he declared an intention to spend more of his own money to build a new community for poor black families. He hired William Gray Purcell for the job, at the time a student of architecture, and got the sketches for the dwellings and the town center done. Unfortunately, the project was abruptly abandoned when an angry white mob, jealous of Benson's wealth, lynched a black man and stormed William's house. The setbacks were many, as most white folks were unwilling to see the Kalija black community thrive. William Benson, however, never backed away. He never lost hope for a better tomorrow, not even when Kalija Academic and Industrial Institute was burned to the ground. Instead, he started it all over, gathered contributions, and ultimately built a new school campus. There was no end to William's plans and will to develop his small community. One of the things that they still lacked in the first decade of the 20th century was proper communication infrastructure. Kalija was connected to nearby towns with curvy, often muddy mountain roads. It affected not only the transport of people, but of goods as well. The solution was to build a railroad. William got to work and convinced several English and Canadian firms to finance the railroad that would connect Kalija with Alexander City. In 1914, the first black-owned railroad in the United States was opened. 16 miles of railroad connecting Kalija to the Alabama Railway Network allowed Dixie Industrial Company to transport lumber and other goods to large trading centers and seaports. The railroad proved itself a great success as Dixie Company began exporting goods to Europe, with Germany being a major customer. That same year, the downfall of the Kalija community began. When the war started in Europe, the Atlantic port was closed and the Dixie Company lost an important market in the following year, due to financial problems, William Benson lost control of both the Kalaja Academic and Industrial Institute and the Dixie Industrial Company to the Board of Trustees. His already aggravated health worsened, and in October 1915, William Benson died. He was buried on the campus of the Kalaja Institute, the place he invested his whole life into. In 1916, the Alabama Power Company obtained the right to build a dam on the Tallapoosa River and sealed the destiny of the Kalaja community. When 10 years later, the water began to fill the creek and form Lake Martin, Kalanja Industrial and Academic Institute closed its doors. The community of thriving black people ceased to exist. Almost a century later, thousands of people passed the Kalanja Bridge on Lake Martin, unaware that beneath them, the remains of the picturesque village, a community of black people who strive to build themselves a life worthy of man. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.